Hello and welcome to Alice and Co. Patton's contribution to the Fold Line Weekender. We hope and we're sure that you're all having a fun time and um, hopefully you'll enjoy our little contribution. Um, so we are um, Alice and Lilia of Alice and Co. Patterns, mother and daughter duo, and we like to give a little history and do some pattern drafting, which is what we're going to do this morning. Um, but when we were asked to contribute to this, um, we were very excited um, to be asked and pleased to be asked. But then we were told half an hour and I was, Ooh, what can we do in half an hour? Oh, I know, smallest thing possible. Who'd like to make a bikini? Not much fabric and hopefully it's summer's coming up. We'll even get to go out and, and go to the beach um, one of these days soon. Um, so we've concentrated on making the bikini top today and showing you how just with a few measurements, a bikini top um, isn't such a daunting thing to draft to get a nice fit. And then we are also going to give you a free downloadable PDF uh, pattern for the bottoms because we couldn't leave you uh, without any pants, could we? Um, so starting off, we are going to go through um, a little history of the bikini and swimsuits in general. And then we'll have a look at how we drafted our um, triangle cup um, and colorful elastic design. So we're kicking off our brief history of swimwear um, and how to draft your own bikini uh, with the ancient Greeks and Romans and this lovely mosaic from a villa in Sicily, which shows two sporty ladies um, quite scantily clad in these kind of bandeau style tops and little pants, which looks very much to our modern eyes like a bikini. Um, of course, we've no idea if they were swimming in these and they certainly didn't have any stretch fabric. Um, so this was seen as kind of a sportswear look um, to my eye with lacking a little bit of support, but um, still very nice to see something which so much resembles um, what we might call a bikini today. And then we're going to do a massive jump to the Victorian era. Um, and why have we missed out all the other centuries, Mum? Well, because there was really probably a bit of dipping in pools rather than actual swimming. But as a woman, you had to be jolly careful that you weren't seen anywhere in the water because for some reason, um, the powers that be decided that women who went into water were witches. And if you were seen swimming, you could be tried and your trial could be a trial by water. Um, and if you floated, you were deemed to be guilty and all sorts of nasty punishments meted out to you. And if you sunk, well, you weren't guilty, but you probably drowned. So this seemed like a no win situation and um, quite um, an effective way to keep women out of the water. Um, but come the Victorian era, um, we have the railways and people beginning to go on holidays um, and a great um, idea of what a fun day out it could be to go to the seaside. A fun day out, but certainly not too much of taking your clothes off. So uh, modesty was all important. So we had the, um, uh, the uh, swimming uh, cabins that you went out into the water and you changed inside and then skipped out for a quick dip in the briny before rushing back in again. And you wouldn't want to spend too long in the water in these outfits. You can see they look very cumbersome and heavy, um, covered you up from, well, actually the toes are bare, but that's about the only bit. Um, so it really wasn't about swimming, it was about dipping. Um, and men and women were not allowed to swim together. That was deemed way too risque. Um, and that rather gave birth to the saucy postcard. Um, where the women are trying to get a quick look at the guys and the guys are trying to get a quick look at the girls and gave us some of our kind of uh, archetypal images like the red and white stripe bathing costume. So moving on to the 1920s, we've got a much more streamlined look and everything in the 20s was streamlined, the architecture, the cars and the swimsuits. Um, and companies like Janssen were realizing that they could use their machinery they were using to make 
outer knitwear into swimsuits so we can get a much more simple streamlined look. And if you look at these lovely ladies on the far left hand side, they just look like they're having such fun on the beach. Um, and what they could be wearing, apart from the one who looks is she's wearing tights or socks, um, they could be uh, modern ladies of today. The look though, I think, belies the fact that the knitting might have looked quite sleek and smooth when it was dry, but I think when it was wet, when she'd actually been in the sea, you would have ended up with quite a soggy bottom. So now we're moving on to the 1930s to 50s, and we're looking at swimwear as glamour. So in comparison to the slide before, where we saw kind of ordinary people frolicking on the beach and having a fun paddle in their new knitted swimwear, um, we're now looking at these images of kind of 40s and 50s pinup uh, starlets. And then I also had to include this amazing um, picture from the 1930s of another Janssen um, swimwear, which has this beautiful cutout and really um, this is a horsed image actually. So showing swimwear entering the fashion sphere. So now you are something you could be photographed in and show it, show off your body in. Um, and this is also the moment when we have the birth of the word bikini. Um, and it comes from this guy, Louis Rayard, who was originally a automobile engineer and then over took over his uh, family lingerie business. And the story goes that he noticed women on the beaches in France rolling down the bottom of their um, two piece, as it would have been called at the time, um, in order to expose their midriff. And he decided, ah, that means there must be a market there. And he set about trying to invent the smallest two piece that he could. And he named it Bikini after a place called Bikini Atoll, which is where they were doing some uh, nuclear testing. So not the um, nicest of things for it to be named after, uh, but I think it was a name which reflected the kind of scandal um, of the of the garment. Uh, and you can also see this is the first one and he it was made in newspaper print fabric. Um, and the model here, not all of the regular Paris models refused to wear it apparently. So he had to go and find a new dancer who um, agreed to model it. And then in comparison to this kind of uh, scandalous skimpy bikini, we have Marilyn's version over here, um, which is kind of the 50s housewife pin-up version. Um, and again, this has lots of structure and frills, not something you'd necessarily be very practical for swimming in, but certainly something to lounge around in and be seen in your beach apartment. And now we're moving on to the 1960s and 70s, and this is your decade. So over to you, Mum. Thanks, Lilia. <laughs> Um, so yes, I did have exactly that orange bikini, the girl in the left picture on the yellow um, surfboard, although I have to say I had a little flat belly board for the Devon coast rather than a big glamorous yellow surfboard like that. That's a very Beach Boys pick, isn't it? Um, so these bikinis are actually fairly modest. They're like a kind of shorts, little shorts bottom and a fairly covered crop top. Um, and these would have been made in bry nylon, which did dry much more quickly than the wool versions, uh, but it didn't really have any stretch in the way that we have kind of stretchy hugging fabrics today. So an improvement, but still some way to go. And following on from that, the bikinis begin to get smaller and smaller until we get this real minuscule triangle version. And yes, I did have one of those too, um, that uh, Jerry Hall is wearing in this rather um, fabulous photograph here. And uh, still on that same kind of three triangle shape bikini, uh, there's Gloria Hendry here. That one looks like maybe a silk bikini. And she is in um, Live and Let Die. And it was the first James Bond film where a black woman was a romantic interest for um, Roger Moore, who was playing James Bond. Um, in the film and she seems to be touting some kind of very offensive weapon there and looking very um, well honed in her rather pretty bikini. So last on this page is the crochet bikini 
Um, I think this is kind of a funny one because crochet to me has a very wholesome image. And so you could ask your granny to crochet you, you a bikini, but it didn't matter if she only, in fact, get her to do the bottoms first, because by this time, topless sunbathing was becoming quite the thing, especially if you were in the south of France or Spain. So um, you didn't really necessarily need the top of your bikini. And then moving on to the 1980s, um, and we get lycra. So lycra um, meant we could have things much more stretched over the body, much more kind of squeezing the body into um, different shapes. Do you want to say something about some of these pictures, Lilia? Just that they're amazingly trashy, especially this Hollywood splash um, image here, which I think is an advert for various different styles. And um, yeah, I guess just really um, going to town on all sorts of cutouts and really bright colors and um, this extremely high cut as well uh, that was made um, famous by the um, Baywatch stars. Um, Swimsuits, and then, please. And then moving on, our slide kind of goes from trashy to classy and then to the kind of ridiculous on the far right. I think this is from 19, the mid 90s um, Chanel. Um, so this was kind of how expensive and how small and how little fabric. Uh, but these ones in the middle are quite nice with the, with the cutouts here. And then also just a, a mention of Speedo, um, who actually was, the company was started at the beginning of the century, um, but doesn't really feature as it, they weren't so fashiony. Um, and they, the Speedo is more of a, a menswear um, item, um, but they were in the 80s and 90s, they kind of came into their own because they did all, lots of the sportswear in the Olympics. Um, I think that's what this uh, advert here is referring to. So another um, famous brand. And then this one in the, the one shoulder one, that's a Hermes one. So again, that's looking rather wonderful. Yes, the idea of a design, designer bikini. So that brings us on to um, what we're going to do, which is to show you how you can make your own bikini um, to fit you. Um, so we've got here the bikini police at the top. So these um, bikini police were going around the beaches of the south of France and measuring. I'm not quite sure what the measurement was, but your bikini sides were supposed to be of a particular measurement. Um, and then we also kind of had the idea that the woman should be of a certain measurement. And if you weren't uh, slim and bikini ready, you shouldn't be seen in your bikini. And thankfully, we've got beyond that these days. So um, we had the lovely series Shrill um, with uh, A.D. Bryant um, uh, pay, uh, playing Annie Easton, um, showing off um, all kinds of fantastic bikini designs for every different shape and size. And we couldn't resist um, this fantastic uh, Halle Berry image. I have been lucky enough to have been to Golden Eye where this was shot and tried to make that image for myself, but I didn't think I managed to, to look quite like Halle Berry, um, but there she is. And I'm kind, of, we kind of sort of inspired by that image to make our own bikini. So we've got some triangle tops, um, a slightly thicker um, elastic to uh, on our top. And um, you'll see from the bottom, so it's a sort of a half belt idea too, which if you want to stick your knife or your scissors into, um, if you want to do some pattern cutting on the beach, um, that could be, um, something it could be an idea for your holidays great so i hope you enjoyed our um lit little history of the swimwear and the bikini there and yeah as we said we um discovered more and more as we researched into it that we could only find pictures pretty much of thin white women so we decided it was time to use our sewing skills to um make that right and be able to make a bikini for everyone just from our own measurements. So now we're going to stop this screen share and we're gonna move on to the fun bit, the pattern drafting. So over to you, Mum. So let's have a go at drafting our own bikinis. So I've made my bikini out of some elastic. This is from Prim and you can buy it all over the place or order it online and it comes in lots of colours. Um, some more classic colours like navy and black and grey and white as well as the bright ones and I think yellow and red. So lots to choose from. 
So that's the, um, the elastic and that kind of gives you, it's nice and soft against your skin, but it's kind of got a nice bit of tautness in it to hold everything in place. And then I've got also Prim, but I'm sure other people make them too. They're not sponsoring me. If they want to, they're very welcome. Um, I've got a little bikini clip here to fasten it together at the back. Although you could fasten a whole loop and shimmy in if you wanted to get in that way. And then for my fabric, there's so many choices you could use. You could use an actual swimwear fabric. I think the new craft house have uh, lots of uh, swimwear remnants on, on at the moment. So you might want to have a look at them. This is just a piece of viscous and lycra with a bit of ping in it that I have quite a big chunk of in my stash box. So it's a good way to use up some of your scraps, especially to have a trial one. And like many people, I find going to buy a bikini a nightmare. You have to go in and out the shops, take your clothes off. You don't like them, put your clothes back on and when go in another shop. I think it's actually much quicker to design your own. And then you can just think of the elements that you like. So I have gone for this kind of classic triangle shape because that's the shape that I like, but I've given it a bit of shaping here to um, this one's actually made to my measurements it actually fits me better than it fits my uh, my dummy here and sits much flatter um, so I've gone for a triangle shape here and you can give that more coverage or less coverage you can go further around the sides you can kind of play around with it so it's a very nice easy shape to play with at the beginning and then I've got some elastic straps here uh, which are nice and comfortable to wear they don't dig in because they've got a bit of width and I think they're quite fun in the multicolor elastic and then I've got my bikini clip at the back there, but you could just join it in a loop and uh, shimmy in, as I said before. Um, so that's what we're going to make. And you can make it any size you like, because it's not based on a pattern, it's based on your measurements. Um, you might have to need a, a trial or two to get it absolutely how you like it um, from the same point of view of design and the point of view of fit. But I must say, I went to this pretty much first go. So I was very pleased about this because I have tried a zillion bikinis on in a shop and not been happy with any of them. So are you ready? Shall we go? So first of all, a few measurements. So the first measurement that we're going to take is um, from the center front here to the bus point or the nipple point, which is just about here. So if you, you might want to take your piece of elastic first and put it around you and then measure wearing the elastic. It's quite, that's how I did it. It's quite a good way to do it. Um, so I measured nine from the center front to the bus point, And then I measured another 10 from that point around to the side seam. So I've got nine at the front and 10 at the side. And then I measured from the top of the elastic upwards to the bus point and I've got six. And then I measured from there up to where I decided I wanted to finish my um, top and I've got 11 there. And that comes about um, where the notch would come on a, um, a sewing a sewing pattern of a top. I think Lilia made hers a bit shorter after she'd finished it um, when she was trying it on, but it's easier to cut more and cut away. So those are the measurements that I'm going to use. And this is what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to first of all draft as a flat triangle, and then I'm going to add some the third dimension to give myself some cup shaping in the triangles. So over to the pattern cutting table. So now I'm going to transfer the measurements onto a piece of paper. And the measurements that I have here, just to remind myself and you, is that I started from my center front, which is here. So I'm going to make a line across, which is the baseline um, where the fabric triangle um, touches the elastic. So I'm going to start here which is the center front. And I'm going to measure nine centimeters across, which was my front uh, side of the bikini measurement. So that's nine centimeters. And then I'm going to add another um, 10 centimeters, which was from the middle to the side. So there's my 10 centimeters. And then I'm going to make a vertical line up through the middle at 90 degrees, which is going to be the shaping line through the middle. 
and I'm going to measure on there my six centimeters to the bust point and my 11 centimeters to the top of my fabric triangle. So there's the triangle marked out. And before I make anything else, I'm gonna put a couple of lines across for notches. I'll just make a crisscross there so I can differentiate that as the bust point. Um, and those will help me when I've separated my pattern into two pieces, will help me put it back together again, which is something I often forget when I'm pattern cutting. Um, I'm going to make a line at right angles at two centimeters across the top because my elastic, at uh, two centimeters on each side, sorry, because my elastic is four centimeters wide. And then when I insert it, it'll fit in nice and neatly. And then I'm going to join the dots at the side. A lot of pattern cutting is about joining the dots. I'm going to join the dots at the side and I've got a triangle with a flat top. So what I've got now is something like one of those 1970s kind of crochet bikinis. Um, not very good for anybody with any shape. Um, but so now what I'm going to do is add the third dimension and go from a 2D triangle into a 3D pattern. So first of all, you need to cut out the two pieces. Just mark them first of all, that that's the center front and that's the side front. And I've drawn some and cut them out already just to move us along a little bit. So I'll just get rid of those and bring these ones that this is exactly the same, but I already cut it into two down the center line. And then I'm going to set up my um, kind of, what would you call this? My structure again, my bikini scaffolding again. And I'm going to again, start with the center front and I'm going to measure, actually, it doesn't quite matter what the measurement is here. I'm just going to make a line at right angles up through the middle to um, base my finished pattern on. And I'm going to need though the bust point, which is at six centimeters up. So I'm going to make a point there. And what this is all about is now pivoting. So we're going to pivot to make our darts. And I've made a little table of how much will um, shaping you need to make different cup sizing. So on this one, I'm going to make a C cup. So I'm going to take make a six centimeter dart that's six centimeters overall. And I'm going to put four centimeters at the base and I'm going to put two centimeters at the top. So it's divided into two thirds and a third. And this is um, chart is on the PDF we're going to send you with all the different measurements. So I'm going to st start by making the dart at the base. So that is going to be four centimeters. So that's two centimeters on either side, making four in all. So there's two on the left-hand side of the center line and two on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to take, first of all, my center front piece. And because what we're trying to make here is two pieces with the shaping down through the middle. And I'm going to start at the bust point and I'm going to pivot it until it comes to the mark at the bottom. It won't quite meet, meet it. And because this is a part of a circle, a radius on a circle, it won't quite come to that line, but that's fine. It'll just give us a little bit of extra shaping at the bottom. So now I'm going to mark, I hope you can see this. So pivoting from the center point there, I'm gonna make a mark here at the bottom corner of my triangle, and that's going to become the new center front point. And then I'm just going to curve down slightly until I hit that point, which is the edge of my dart. So that's the two centimeters there for the dart. And that's, and then I'm going to draw down um, this line here from the center front down to that two centimeters. So there's my first part of my um, shaping. And then for the top of the shaping, I'm gonna pivot the other way and I'm going to pivot, I could have- You just need to move your paper down a little bit, I think. Okay, is that better? Yeah. yeah. So then I'm going to just make a mark here and I could have done this first, but I didn't. And I'm going to make that, um, that one is gonna be two centimeters. So it's going to be one centimeter on either side at the top. So that will be prepared for the other side as well. 
And then I'm going to take my pivot point again, put it back on the bust point. And this time I'm going to move it until it hits that line at the top. And now I'm going to make a line there. And then I'm going to make a line at the top, to the top here. And then I'm going to join the dots. So now I have, let's just draw that one again. I have a piece that looks like this. So this is my bus point. And this is the center front. And this whole piece is the center front. It doesn't have any seam allowances on, so you can either trace it again with seam allowances. I'm just gonna write that on and I'm going to cut my seam allowances straight onto the fabric. And what I didn't mark on, because it's the thing I always forget, is I'd handily put these notches on. So that will help me when I come to sew it, if I put those on there now. So those are the notches now. So that's the center front part of the bikini. Um, which is this side of the bikini um, sorted. Now I'm going to do the other side. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my other side of my shape, only I don't know what's happened to it. It's just right in front of you. Oh yeah, there it is, right in front of me. That's what happens with white on white. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to start at the bus point here. And then I'm going to pivot this around until it almost touches the line at the bottom. And I'm going to draw that line in. And then I'm going to make a mark at the side here. And then just slightly draw that with a slight curve. You could do that in a more fancy way with a French curve if you wanted to. And then I'm going to move this to the pivot the other way and go up to the edge of the dart, across the top, and then I'm going to use my pattern piece there to, whoops, to join the dots. And that didn't take too long. And now we've got already a completed pattern. And once again, I've forgotten to put my notches in. Once you've got into a bad habit, it's very hard to get out of it. And so on this side, this is the side front and there's the bus point. And once again, there's no seam allowances. And that's it. That is the um, basis of the pattern. And so if you when make that up, and Lily is going to show you how to do that, you have the triangle shape top that we made, and then you can start to play around and um, refine the shape until it's absolutely how you like it. And so I've actually, once I've made those two pieces, and I'm just going to put on, these are the two that I already made earlier. I'll just move that one and put these. So those are two I made earlier. The only thing I've added is the uh, grain line, which is about, at right angles to the line across the bottom. So that's the grain line for the fabric. So now I've completed the pattern cutting work. It's over to Lilia to show you how to make it up. Um, but before she begins, I can see that like mother, like daughter, she's forgotten to put any notches on her pattern. I did. And this did cause me, cause me trouble and strife later on. So remember your notches. Um, yes, so I'm going to just quickly show you the making up process and the kind of design decisions fitting that I went through when I made up um, this pattern. So I'm not sure we mentioned the construction of the bikini. So we've designed it to have, or the way we've made ours is to do it double layer um, and then the top of the elastic is enclosed. Um, of course, when you make your own patterns, you also can make up your own sewing instructions. So up to you how you decide to construct it. It will also depend on what fabric you're using. Um, but this is the process that I use. So you can see here on the left is the uh, elastic I use. So I was using the same prim, um, nice, soft. I think it's I think they call it waistband elastic. Um, and I just pinned my or clipped my elastic onto the clips in place and this was the right size and then I marked my centre front and my side points onto the elastic um, and I kept these pins in as useful marking points. Um, I would just mention 
to be careful which pins that you use and try and use the sharpest ones um, or possibly use uh, a different marking method as they can um, kind of leave, they can catch on the elastic, which I learned the hard way. Anyway, so here you can see my pattern pieces. So this was my triangle, which I originally drafted from my measurements. Um, and then on the left is my pivoted piece here. So I was doing an E cup. So I think I had nine centimeters to distribute um, in my dart at the top. And uh, so six at the bottom and three at the top. And yes, I forgot my notches. So with the pattern drafted, um, I again decided not to trace it off with any seam allowances just yet. Um, and so I just cut it straight out of the fabric and I did a 0.7 seam allowance all the way around the outside. And then these are my pieces cut out and I did mark um, the right and the wrong sides of the fabric because the fabric I was using, which is a lovely uh, medium weight Ponte de Roma navy, um, was right and wrong sides and it's quite easy to confuse the pairs as the sides are quite similar but do make a difference if you stitch the wrong ones together again i learned from experience <laughs> so this was my first attempt so i just stitched up one layer um, at this point uh, to check the fit and you can see here so it's just pinned together all the way along the elastic um, and pinned at the um, straps um, you could tack it all together, which would probably be a less uh, spiky um, experience, uh, but mine is just pinned. And you can see I was quite happy here with the fit through the bust shaping. The only thing I didn't like was I felt it was sitting too high up. Now, this obviously I have added a seam allowance around the edge of the triangle, which isn't incorporated because I've only cut one layer. So um, bearing that in mind, I just pinned where I thought I wanted the strap to sit. So you can see on this middle picture, this is what I plumped for. I also had a bit of a play around at this point and tried out some different styles. So um, I tried seeing what it'd be like if I um, stitched it together at the center for a bit more coverage. I also looked at crossing over the two cups, which is what I decided to go for in the end. Um, and then I had to play with some strap options. So I did some crisscross straps. And then I also tried a halter neck version, which is on the right here, which I actually really liked. And I'm definitely going to make one like that as that soft elastic is very comfortable on a style, which I usually find quite difficult to um, wear. So I didn't have any particular fitting issues. It was more of a more designed decisions, but this is this is the fun bit. Um, and now it is a case of transferring that um, reduced height onto my paper pattern. So this was what my bikini looked like in its trying on stage, as you can see, all um, pinned together rather precariously. Um, so I just measured off how much height I wanted to take off on the cup. And for me, that was four centimeters. Um, so that's, I'm ignoring my little seam allowance there. And then I marked that off on the pattern, um, parallel to the top of the strap line. And then I just drew in a new line, um, down to the bottom of the band, um, seam there. Um, I would say at this point I did toy, you can kind of slightly see that I rubbed it out with adding back in some coverage along the side. Now that I've reduced the height, you can see I've lost quite a lot through here as well. Um, I didn't and it worked out fine, but it, it's something that I think I could definitely play with to really refine um, the shape and get something um, really beautifully fitting. So now on to the construction. Um, so it's very simple, only a few seams. So the first thing is to join back together the side front and the center front seams, oops, along um, that uh, central shaping point. Um, and again, another thing that you might refine here when you're sewing is this very sharp point at the bust point you probably don't want. So you can just um, curve that off as you sew through there. And again, you could we could have put that on the pattern actually as well, um, to, if you were gonna cut it with seam allowances next time. Um, and the stitch I used, once I was happy with uh, the fit and everything, I went in and stitched it with a stretch stitch, so the little lightning stitch um, on my machine. Um, when I was doing the twirling, I didn't use that stitch, I just used a regular straight stitch, as this one is impossible almost to unpick, so I definitely recommend only using this stitch when you are going in for the final version. Um, and mum, I think you stitched your final version just with a straight stitch anyway. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm a very lazy stitcher. I'm just like an easy one. Yeah. But you can make it on your um you can make it on an overlocker very well or use one of the stretchy stitches too, especially if your fabric's really pingy. Yeah. Um, and then you can see here, I also uh, was a bit fancy and I pressed my central seam open and then top stitched that down on either side as well, which I think looks quite smart. And it also has the benefit of giving you a little bit of extra structure through the shaping as well. Um, and next up is to add the straps. So I did this just by sandwiching the strap um, in the middle between the two layers and then stitching around the sides across the top and back down again. So I'm le leaving the bottom open at this point. And then um, when I'd done that, I trimmed away all of the seam allowances, um, but I left the seam allowance on the strap end because I thought it was good to have a bit more to kind of anchor it in there. But all these things are your choice. Um, depends a bit on your fabric and your machine and how you like to do things. So these are my finished cups here. Um, and the next step is to attach them to the band. So a few options here. Um, we did have um, quite a fun foray into figuring out how, how you could bag out the whole thing and have the, all of the seams enclosed, which is possible um, and does look rather smart, but we um, thought it was a little bit complicated to explain now. Um, and we so instead, we're just showing you how to top stitch the um, elastic to the cups and I actually think that this looks really smart so I tried it out a couple of ways one with uh, a line of lightning um, stretch stitch a couple of doing a double stretch stitch also looks quite smart but then actually I decided that the three-step zigzag um, was I don't know I think it looks really nice so I went for that in the end um, and then this that was exactly my conclusion too yeah making similar experiments especially if you um obviously if you match the thread to the elastic then it all looks quite neat um and then this is just on the inside so you can see it's just stitched on top and then you can trim away um any edges that you missed on your stitching so it makes it all very nice and quick and easy um and so this is how i did it so i just pinned it really carefully along the band and you'll see that i did decide to go for this slightly crossed over um, look in the center front here, um, as I felt like that fitted me the best. Um, and then I stitched just lining up with the edge of the elastic. And then this is what the pieces look like. So the zigzags just going straight across the bottom of the cups. And that's what it looks like on the inside. So nearly at the final um, hurdle. Um, and that's just to finish off the straps. Um, so again, I just used the uh, three step zigzag. Um, to enclose the clip um, and then to attach my straps. Now, if I was doing this again, I think I could have done this a lot neater and either um, kind of enclose that raw edge underneath the strap or the other way around. Um, but I was getting a bit excited about getting my bikini finished at this point. Um, so yes, you can improve on that in your version. However, I think it turned out rather smart. So this is my finished bikini on the front and on the back. I think compared to going shopping for a bikini, this is A, way quicker, B, way less stressful, C, way cheaper. And I'm sure there's some other things, as well, other advantages as well. Definitely, well, make way more fun. Yeah. Did you and mention you find yourself sitting naked doing your sewing, though, to go from step to step so you don't have to keep taking your clothes off. Yes, I was going to mention that getting all the straps um, sewn in, it would have been helpful for somebody. Have, have a friend at hand. And I did find myself sitting sewing at my sewing machine topless. So, <laughs> so we hope you have enjoyed our session um, and enjoyed our little foray into history of swimwear. And you're now inspired to go off and make your own um, bikini top. And I can say that I've actually been wearing mine around the house since I've been wearing it just as a bra. So definitely um, a really good option for starting to make your own lingerie as well. It would work really well in um, stretch lace or something like that. So lots of possibilities. And of course, our two mannequins here are looking a rather bare down here. So we're not abandoning you just with a bikini top and we have 
or we will have, by the time this goes out, made a uh, PDF pattern, which you'll be able to download for free from our website with some matching bottoms for your bikini. So I think, mum, you've got your pants there to show us. Pants. I've got the pants. So this is the pattern that I've been working on for the pants. So um, you can see they look quite nifty with the top. Very smart. Um, and they were, um, again, not very difficult to make. And I hadn't really made pants before, so that was uh, interesting to uh, see how the making up went. And like the top, I've actually drafted these to go right up to the waist. So then you can cut them down to whatever level you like. So you can have waist highs, you can have kind of classic hip highs, or if you want to be more revealing at the side, you could take the elastic all the way around and just have the, um, the back and the front with just elastic at the side. So all sorts of um, possibilities to go as, as modest or, or bare as you, as, you, as you dare or as you prefer. Uh, so that pattern will be free to download as well. So we hope that that has demystified the art of pattern cutting the bikini a little bit and that you feel confident that you can go and have a go at your own. Do get in touch if you have any questions and if you want the instructions and the free pants pattern then just head over to our website and sign up to the newsletter and you'll be able to get that. Um, we hope that you enjoy the rest of the weekend and we'll see you around. Bye. Bye.